Good afternoon. I'm here with my guest, um, Stephen Ostrowski. And along with his son, Ben, who is now working on his PhD at Carnegie Mellon, who can't be here tonight, uh, wrote a book of poetry, um, sort of a call and response type of thing, Pen Ultimate Human Constellation, right? Correct. By what press is that? Uh, that is Tolson Press. They're a small independent press in uh, Arizona. But it originally started out right here in Somerville. It's it Gloria Mindox. Um, it's great Savannah Barber Press. She's former. She's just ending her term as poet laureate here. And, yeah. Uh, Gloria was was fabulous. Uh, have you actually met Gloria? I have. Oh yeah. Yes, yeah, I yeah. met her down in Washington at uh, uh, one of the AWPs. Yeah. Um, Very lovely woman. She's wonderful. She's got so much energy and yeah. talented writer and, you know, obviously a great patron of the arts. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Very eclectic. So anyway, yeah. So you lucked out. Um, <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, um, so your new book could be described as almost as a collection of lyrical emails between father and son, your son Ben, when he was cross overseas in the Southeast Asia. Uh, you know, what was the germ of this idea, you know? Well, um, actually, uh, the chapbook poems are in this book, and then we, when Gloria took that and published it, we thought, well, let's keep going. Uh, and then we wrote another chapbook's worth of poems called Q&A, mm -hmm. which are kind of strange questions and answers that we pose to each other, uh, keeping the conversational uh, style. And then uh, Benjamin went off to Southeast Asia uh, for a summer, and we decided we would write poems uh, back and forth uh, called Poems from Southeast Asia, Poems from Southeast Connecticut. Okay. And he would write from a city in Southeast Asia, and then I would write from a town in Southeast Connecticut, and mm. we'd kind of play with that. And then uh, we submitted the three sort of chapters, all of which could be chap books, um, to uh, Tolson, and they they took it, they liked it a lot, and uh, you know, they said they'd like to publish it as a full-length book. But the editor, uh, who was this great editor, her name is Risa Pappas, mm -hmm. um, said, I think we need one more section. Mm -hmm. So we wrote one final section um, in about the course of a month and a half, uh, just this past early summer. Um, submitted. But what was, like I said, the germ of the idea, why did you feel this, you wanted this project? Uh, Benjamin was home. He was at Brown at the time. Mm -hmm. He was an undergraduate at Brown. And um, he was home. Uh, it was right after Christmas. And mm -hmm. I just said, hey, you, let's, let's have a conversation in poems and mm -hmm. see what we do. You know, because I, I know he yeah. writes poetry. He knows I write poetry. Right. Um, and I was just thinking, I don't know what uh, the impetus exactly was of whether I saw something about, you know, risk taking in poetry or doing something different, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I just said, let's, uh, you want to do something? Want to just play around with this? Mm -hmm. and, um, and he said, sure. So I wrote the first one. Mm -hmm. The very first line of the first mm -hmm. poem was, but let's not talk the way we learned. Mm -hmm. um, because I wanted it to be experimental, free-flowing. He, he happily picked up uh, on that, and off we went. Oops, I think your microphone. No, I think it's yours. Sorry about that, folks. Anyway, so was it therapeutic? It was, uh, I don't know, I don't know if therapeutic is exactly the word, it, to some extent, but it was, uh, it was very dynamic. Mm -hmm. um, and it became a kind of, uh, I don't know, a little bit of a love fest, you know, um, not, not without angst, not, I think it's, it's very honest. Um, but we sort of uh, expressed a lot of a lot of our emotions toward one another, toward 
It's, you know, it's hard for... Family? Uh, it's hard for men to express emotion directly. Yes. Uh, so there was this, a, couldn't do it towards that? I think so. I think to some extent. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Benjamin is, uh, is probably better at expressing his emotion live and, and, and mm -hmm. you know, orally uh, than I am. Uh, so I think for me, it was probably even more therapeutic than for him. Uh, but so, yeah. it, 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 cre it, we, it became more than just about what we were writing about, which could be almost anything. It became a kind of uh, fun dynamic in which we would pick up on each other's phrases and we would mm -hmm. pick up on, on cadences and we would just start playing off of that. It became kind of like uh, freeform jazz almost. Um, not that it wasn't edited and that we didn't Even go- Even a little vaudeville. A little vaudeville, yes. Yeah. There's a lot of punning, a lot of yeah. playing, playing with language, uh, silly jokes, things like that. Um, but also, you know, riffing on, on just the sounds of words and on images. And we float around through the universe and come back down and talk about garbage mm -hmm. men in New London. I mean, it's, it's all over the, the universe, basically, <laughs> hence the constellation. Now, your son is a scientist. He was studying bio, biology and neuroscience and all that stuff. Not biology so much, but psychology and neuroscience, neuroscience at Brown at University Brown, yep. and he, Ben, your son is, and he did make use of neuroscience and biology uh, for, in his poetry. He did, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, Talk a bit about that. Yeah, um, he, he really introduced the, the neuro and the, and the bio into mm. the poems. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, you know, he, he's mm -hmm. kind of writing in a very immediate way. If he's learning something, Mm -hmm. It can often make its way right into a poem, like mm -hmm. you know, um, and he's he's always kind of exploring and thinking about what mm -hmm. what these things can mean and how he can use them. So uh, yeah, so that that got into the poems, and that, that was a challenge for me. Um, but uh, it it was like I said, it was a lot of fun. It was I really felt like we were uh, jamming mm -hmm. with language instead of instruments. Freeform jazz, yeah, right, right. yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of poetry and jazz collaborations. I know even, you know, just talking about jazz, I mean, yeah. you know, over here in Boston, we have the Lizard Lounge, and Robert Pinsky has done a number of these things yes. with jazz. And um, Yeah, when I was an undergraduate, a poet named Barry Wallenstein, I don't yeah. know if you've heard of him or you yeah. know, how well-known he is, but he, he used to uh, perform with a jazz band and uh, mm -hmm. read his poetry and it was the first time I'd ever been exposed to that. It was, it was really interesting. Okay. Uh, now, um, I was going to say, he even brought, Ben brought in some hip-hop influence. Yes, absolutely. Today. Yeah. yeah. How did you deal with that? Uh, I countered with Bob Dylan. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, he, he loves hip-hop, uh, was, was very influenced at, by hip-hop uh, growing up. You know, not that it was playing in the house, but he found it in w amongst his friends and uh, out in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, <clears throat> you know, would would drive my wife and I around in the car to listen to the to hip hop songs and said, "Listen to this. Listen to what he's saying." And it's very and, lyrical, of course. Yeah, right? yeah there yeah. was some beautiful things that I mean. You know, maybe my first impulse would be to say, "Yeah, this isn't really great music or anything." But the more he brought us into it, the more it's I acquired taste. Yeah, and the more I appreciated what was going on there. That, well, that now it's the course of academic. You know, I was telling the kids, you know, they want to write about hip hop in class. I said, go on Google Scholar. And you know, there's all this scholarly Absolutely. writing about hip, hip, hip hop and all this, you know, the sociology of it, whatever. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it's, it's definitely a, a, a valid scholarly topic. Right. As right. is Dylan. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, actually, Christopher Ricks at Boston yeah. University did a study of him and he won the Nobel. Absolutely. I've read Very several controversial. of his books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, I meant Dylan won the Nobel oh, Prize. Oh, Dylan. Yeah. Well, that was a big controversy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I have a lot of poet friends you're probably watching who did Some not like, like, like that. that, but I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Good, good. That's good um, to know. Now, um, so you, you also you wrote a, I don't think it's, on, it's published, but a, 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 a novel about 
uh, rock musician. Yes. Uh, tell us a bit about that. Yeah. The, the, it was sort of a fantasy of yours that still is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, I wrote a, a book, a novel called The Last Big Break. Mm -hmm. um, was it published? It was not published. Okay. I had three publishers accept it and all three folded before they, you know, I, startups. You know how small presses are. I know, yeah. I know. Um, something tells me that maybe it's just not in the cards because if, maybe it makes, it makes small presses fold. Maybe it's yeah. cursed or something. But uh, the first chapter was published in a, on a, in a journal called uh, uh, Works in Progress and it got good feedback there. And, you know, like I said, I had, I had an agent for it who said, oh, we've come really close, but you know, they didn't like this and they didn't like mm. that. So, yeah, but I did write the novel. It is about a, a, a musician. Mm. Um, it's about a musician. It's about a, his relationship with his wife and his daughter. Uh, they live in New York City. Mm -hmm. uh, he's struggling. He's, he, he had one kind of big break where he was an opening act for some bigger, bigger names, and that's his you know that movie guy. that came out with the Cohen brothers reminds me of yes. the, like the, the uh, yes yeah um, Lillian right. Davis or right yeah Lillian yes something like uh, that. there was also another movie uh, I can't remember the name of it uh, it was a more of a country singer who's the guy in the Big Lebowski uh, oh yeah 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 I know Jeff Bridges Jeff Bridges yeah. and he played a kind of washed up. Uh, Singer, yeah. songwriter. There were scenes in that movie. I swear, he he read my manuscript or whoever wrote the movie. Sue. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't believe how similar they were. Yeah. And I, the manuscript had been out a lot longer than the movie. But anyway, yeah. such, such is life. Um, but yeah, so music, I've done that. Music, and there's a musicality to poetry, of course. I mean, you're right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. I mean, poetry can be really dead on the page if it doesn't have. It has to sing. Music. Yeah. Yeah, it has to sing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, um, I was impressed, you know, with your son and, uh, his writing and, um, you know, he was writing about, I mean, even stuff like sticky rice, he's eating yeah. sticky rice in, uh, in Southeast in Asia Hanoi, yeah. and the way he integrates light into a lot of the poems, uh, he's, he's, he's got a thing going there. He's, uh, yeah, I think he's going to be heard from. He's, he's very young. He's only 24. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Um, but he's a damn good poet, uh, damn good writer, and a, and a real thinker. Uh, so, yeah, I look forward to uh, seeing what comes out of his pen over did the you, years. Did you grow up in a literary family yourself? Yes, it was uh, definitely working class, hard scrabble. You oh, know, Staten we, Island. Type. On Staten Island, Port Richmond, um, shadow of the Bayonne Bridge. Right, right. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, it was a, it was a tough life, but... Uh, my father was a kind of closet poet. Oh. Um, we found out. What did he do, your father? He was, uh, worked for Con Edison. Okay. He was an electric meter reader, and yeah, then he worked his way yeah. up. Um, and, uh, but he wrote poetry and painted, mm -hmm. but never showed us anything. Every once in a while, we'd, get it, we'd see what he'd written, and uh, he was pretty good. Yeah. But, you know, kind of raised in a, in a way where you don't, Shows. Well, I mean, even like I remember uh, reading about Wallace Stevens. He said he would never tell people in the insurance agency he worked, insurance company, that he was a poet because yeah. it would undermine him, and especially in a very you know sort of mask uh, you know macho kind in of a macho or, culture. Or, yeah. yeah, I wonder. Yeah, I wonder what that undermining would would be like. Um, well, I mean, it was his Stevens. credibility. I mean, they they felt threatened. Okay. Uh, you know, yeah. um, they, you know, you're a businessman while well, you're doing this, or you know, I can't understand. Like doctors, I was reading something by about this doctor right on here is a very well-known poet, and he says, you know, doctors, you know, are very factual and on emotion, yes. and they don't know how to deal with poetry and things like that. And he's trying to bring it to them. It's some poetry or poetic sensibility into the relationship yeah. between the patient and the. You know, it's interesting you should say that because just the other day. Uh, my wife had to go to the ER. Ooh. Um, nothing too serious, but mm. I was sitting in the waiting room and there was a, a literary journal by the staff mm. of the hospital. Um, and the editor was the doctor who had written a poem. And then there were, you know, paintings and, and prose poems. And well, the Bellevue poetry. Literary Review. Well, yeah, that's, that's right. That's yeah. probably the, the yeah. top, top shelf. Top of, shelf. Uh, yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, so so, getting back to Benjamin, who is uh, who is uh, 
a psychologist or training to be a, uh, you know, a occupation, uh, I'm sorry, not occupational therapist, a, a organizational. organizational behaviorist. Um, he's got that side where, where he's very much working with, uh, with uh, businesses and companies and, and trying to maximize their productivity and creativity. But then he's got this other side that's very, you know, you know, kind of wild and, and lyrical and. Right. You know. Yeah. Well, that's good. He's not. Yeah. Uh, now, um, so basically, it seemed to me that he was in this great self discovery, and you too were in this self, in this interchange between, between you two. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, the thing unfolded very spontaneously. So there mm -hmm. was a lot of self-discovery and other discovery. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, a lot of riffing on each other's lines. And uh, not only just, you know, the, the language we were using, but the ideas we were using. Uh, I, the, the title, Penultimate Human Constellation, ca came from him. Uh, I had said in one of the early poems, let's have the penultimate human conversation. And later on, playing off of that, he says, no, let's have the penultimate human constellation, because the idea of looking at the stars had come up somewhere in between. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was that sort of thing. It was, there was just a lot of kind of like picking up on themes and motifs and just even individual words that we mm -hmm. like the sound of or that kind of reverberated with with meaning and consonants so yeah, yeah it was a lot of it was there was a lot of energy it was a different kind of energy than i've ever had in a writing experience that's for now sure. this was published in came out in august in august so have you been doing readings and we've done a few readings um one of the problems is Benjamin's in Pittsburgh at Carnegie Mellon all the time. And uh, it's a big literary community up there. Yes. Yeah. And he's, he's in the process of arranging for me to come up there and we'll do some readings there. Um, we read at some of the local libraries. I'll be reading at East Lime library, uh, shortly. Um, he won't be able to make it, but I'll be reading his poems as well as mine. Um, and then we're hoping in the summer to do a, a little bit more getting the book out there, you know, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, it's available on Amazon and other places. Yes, it's at uh, Tolson's uh, website. You have uh, any bookstores? Or? And at, uh, at uh, Amazon. It's available in uh, a few cafes, mm -hmm. but no, it's not being carried by bookstores. Mm -hmm. uh, See, around here we have some independent bookstores that will carry books. and Yeah. Like the uh, Gorillier, which is a famous poetry oh. bookshop, and... Uh, Porter Square Books and yeah, Harvard, you've got, Harvard you've Bookstore. Got great yeah, bookstores here, around here, here. here. Yeah. Actually, you know, I, I just haven't uh, maybe explored as much as I could what, where it could be carried. Maybe yeah. R.J. Julia's uh, in, yeah. in Connecticut is a great bookstore. And, uh, you knew New Haven and all? You're not New, New, New Haven. No. They're, so. they're halfway between New London and New Haven. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So listen, um, Got about 12 minutes. Maybe you can read some poems. Sure. From the book. Sure. I'd be happy to. Yeah. This is the book. There you go. And, uh, yeah, I'd just like to say thank you to, to the people at Tolson, um, uh, David and Brandy Pischke, uh, particular, who uh, believed in the book and, you know, took it. That's right. And published it. They, the leap of faith. Yeah, it was a leap of faith. Okay, so I'm going to read uh, the very first poem, which I wrote to Benjamin, and then his response. And, and you get a flavor for how, how this process uh, worked. You're going to change your voice at all? <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't know if I can. Okay, this first poem is called Hey Bud. Let's not talk the way we learned or think in old orbits. Don't want to wind up in the house of worn synapses or embroiled in TV dark matters. Dark matters, but not as much as somersaulting in the lungs of a star. We're both a little sensitive to what's just around the corner. Tell me about how that feels to you and what it's like to be a strengthening tree 
with new eyes for the stained glass world. Kid, let's have the penultimate human conversation. Not just pens, though. Let's build it out of flashlights, juxtapose insights, and not cave into fear. Clean is how we'll make it to the end, and maybe here, half here, night's urgent instant message. Every time you blink, what you don't see is you. Last night, I walked out the back door to listen from the hill to the strings of my billion cells, shivery electric shape like shifted silver. I saw what I heard from huge inner space. I sensed the revolution of time present, and man, I wished you were there. Maybe you were. Okay, so here's what I want. What I want for her, what I want for them, what I want for you. Well, wait. Give me another life to find a word for it. I'm always thinking there's more. Music more, lover more, God more, ways to wash the wayward world with words more. Meantime, tell me what you see. Where's your flashlight pointed, kiddo? You got a body of thought so lit for brilliance, you'd have to reinvent yourself out of blood love to figure it out. And this is Benjamin's response. <clears throat> I wake up shivering, no, vibrating. My atoms bumblebee and hip-hop around like kernels, like drops of water on a skillet. Let's have the penultimate human constellation. Hey, Pops, hey, Pops, I think that I am squeezed through a tunnel or something because when I peek around the corner, I feel it in the roots of my teeth. What is it about right now that Borealis's Aurora, iris, pouring eyelids, soaring highness, and other rhyme words. You've seen so many more pine cones than I have. I wish I could scuba into cerebellum to figure even one answer to these hornet questions. Wordless lessons, sword confessions. Explode your best, son. Go ahead. I still got quite a bit. All right. Got eight minutes. A couple more. All right. So... From the second section, uh, second section is called Q&A, uh, weird questions and weird answers, basically, uh, anything goes. Um, and this is the first poem from that section. The title is Question, On Night and Its Askings. And I wrote this one, and then I'll read mm. Benjamin's answer. Okay. A permission gate opens, narrower than the light that seeps through an egg crack. Permission to do or undo. Everyone asleep is the best time to wander through a field marked by question. Benjamin, night crept into my brain with strange and pregnant interrogations, and I wonder if you've known the same phenomenon, those sinewy askings that go on and on. Did Dante notice the thousand crossed twigs along the path or was he blind with vision? Shakespeare cry over Lear upon waking from his own love-failed nightmare. I feel like a man in the guts of a machine made of vibrating string, cords of why. Light seeks no permission to pour through a glass of stains or wave away in dots for half the day. What, Benjamin, when darkness comes with, with its agenda of do and undo? does night ask of you? Benjamin's answer is called Sunday Windows. Glass looks better broken anyway. Pops, sometimes I sit soaked in a vat of ink. That's when the irises feel the most irrelevant. Night creeps like it doesn't want to wake me and just sits softly on my brain, seeps in through the roots of my canals and almost shyly questions. I guess I chant to it and her and even you sometimes. I've got maybe one guess for those sinewy askings that go on, those oil rivers flooding through the shattered windows of my room reactants. I learned in chemistry that energy isn't given to the cosmos when bonds are broken. It's when they're formed. Keep going. Okay. Five minutes. 
And they won't buy the book because you read all the poems, right? <laughs> There's plenty of poems in here. Yeah. Okay, this one is, uh, you, you mentioned the uh, poems from Southeast Asia. Uh, this one, Benjamin wrote from Hanoi. Who did the artwork on this book, by the way? Oh, that's my, that's a painting of mine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, th yeah. So your wife got you in, into the painting, right? Yeah, she did. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Susan. I appreciate that. It's been fun. It's another form of getting it out, you know? Yeah, I hear you. And there's I, a, you need, you need your, out, you need need your outlets. Out. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, this is called Hanoi, Vietnam. Hey, Pops, good news. I feel an old expression spun on. Tired legs chopped up, sautéed, mixed basil in, pumping heart of Hanoi's French Quarter, sided with sticky rice that arrives in a basket and gets rolled into clouded bundles that cannot choose which of my fingers to cling to, left, then, right, back to left now. This is the second floor, and I can feel the worn bits catching new light in the noodled pho. A, a study of new light being conducted in the street. These streets buzz and hubbub with horn honking by the streetside ba mi and the restaurant at the meeting of Hang Ga and Hang Nan is lodged tightly between its neighbors, all books in the shelf keeping dust off each other's covers. I have trouble, ironclad rubble, iPad tunnel, picking which novel. A freckled newt was clung to the ceiling and wall of the room, and I could not decide if I could sleep with it there, so we both gathered dust. I suppose then that pops, the good news is, spread thinly over sprout fields, popped up from water ponds for a hungry nation. The gaze of a child tattooed, devilish garden watching from a flaky pulpit is stretched bedsheets, hungry bugs, shiny shells, crittering, catching light of the rice cart brake lights, burrowing deep night who pedals past. There is a flat foot woman with smiled wrinkles, fixing motorbikes, my small brain trying to keep to itself. So when you lift that book up, show, show us the, you know, show the audience the book. Um, and also, if, um, and you can get that again on Amazon, and if you lift up the new, our new issue of Ibbotson 44, uh, yeah, yeah, and, um, and actually, uh, Steve has promised to send us a poem. Address. I will definitely submit to this. It's a beautiful looking journal. That's wow. of, the, uh, of Jacob Worth's um, restaurant that is no longer with us. Another, another great institution that, that has passed. But uh, I, love the, I love the 